Good afternoon, friends. Hope everyone's doing good on this Wednesday. Happy hump day. Just going to start off by saying God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Um, hope everybody had a safe 4th of July. Um, you got to be hot. Again, at the beginning of this week, Monday and Tuesday, it was a scorcher. Today, it was kind of warm until this rain came through and kind of cooled things off. Let it rain, let it rain. Um, my excavator, one of the tracks, stopped working on the excavator while I was uh, pushing some dirt and digging some stumps. So, I think the Lord was telling me I need to chill out for a minute. <laughs> I've been going at it, friends pretty hardcore ever since well, our shutdown um, we shut down while well, we had basically I had two weeks off a little over two weeks because we shut down um, not last Thursday but the Thursday before so I had Friday Saturday Sunday and then of course this last week and then Saturday and Sunday and then of course this week and then Saturday and Sunday so um, I'll be going back to work next week well, Monday, hopefully. <laughs> you just never know in these days. Uh, um, day to day, when you're going to be able to work, and we should just be thankful and prepare ourselves for these times that we don't have work. Two weeks off, it's a long period of time. Um, I, mean, I was anticipating a week off, but I mean, we got two weeks off, so. Guess I'll take it how you get it. But man, last week, um, I was kind of in my feelings a little bit. I'm not going to lie and be very transparent with you guys. It was in my feelings. I was like, man, everybody else is out having great times. You know, I get to see all these people just going out, enjoying themselves, kayaking trips, and just going places and doing things. And little old me, I'm sitting at the crib working out in my mom's bathroom very diligently. I'm talking... There's one time I, uh, this is not bragging at all, I'm just expressing what I've been feeling and how I went about doing things, so just want to clarify that, but I stayed up to 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, I do my best work at night, <laughs> I used to do my best drinking at night, <laughs> so, um, no, nah, it wasn't the best drinking, but, um, but I stayed up one night because I wanted to get it finished, I, I didn't, I wanted it to be done by Friday, well, it didn't get done by Friday, but it was it was pretty close. There's a lot of tedious things from when you rip everything out of a bathroom completely and then rebuild it. Um, it's kind of like our lives, you know. And I'll pertain, I'll pertain all this. All this will come together, you know. You rip things out to prepare for new. You know, some people gotta go. Some things gotta go. Um, in order for us to grow um, and we have to be rooted but we'll get into that my topic for this is going to be um, we have to be rooted in the Lord in order to grow um, but I'm not going to lie I took some before pictures a lot of before pictures uh, took some during pictures um, I was I didn't get too upset doing this project at all. Um, things worked out very, very well. I mean, I took my time as much as I could and just used the knowledge and the skills that the Lord has blessed me with and, of course, some common sense. And then I tried to um, teach my son some stuff and explain to him why I'm doing things as I was going. And it was really, it was really awesome having my son there helping me out when he could. Um, thank you again, Bub, for your help. I, I don't know if I could have got all that done at the end without you, and I really appreciate you. Thank you, I love you. But um, it just, I take it, some crazy things happen during, I'm not going to get into it on this, but uh, things that I normally probably could have cussed at, but I kind of giggled at and was like, you're going to cover this up anyway, so don't even trip. Well, I'm just going to tell you what happened. I was putting up a big old piece. This piece was, uh, I took the paneling off the wall. And what I was going to do, I was going to put it back on the wall and just cut out 
you know, where it is and stuff like where the stuff, because I put integrated mirrors into the wall, um, his and her mirrors, vanities, um, medicine cabinet type deals. So um, when I put the piece of, you know, this thing was big, it was the tallest point of the house and it had a little angle on it. When I put it up, the thing broke halfway through and fell on my head and just broke even more. And I was like... I giggled a little bit, but of course I was I was kind of discouraged a little bit because I was like, man, I wish I would have had that other person. But I um, I didn't get totally upset to throw profanity and cuss words and stuff out there. So that's one thing the Lord has been working on me is like patience and then like uh, just being calm and just, you know, getting through things without cussing and just, you know, taking a deep breath and just continuing to go and do it the best that we can with what we have. So, um, long story short, I got it all done, pretty much all done. I got to do a couple things and, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. My mom loves it and I, I'm just, you know, it's, it's the thing I'm looking back at it and I'm like, it really looks very nice. I'm not going to lie. It, like really, really good. I did. I took more care of my mom's bathroom that I did the bathroom that I did for the spare bathroom and stuff like that so um granted some of the parts were a little bit easier than my bathroom because I mean she's got a bigger bathroom so it's more room and stuff like that so it just really looks a lot nicer and cleaner and it just really looks good so and I'm like man I want to have some fun and stuff like that but I okay so the weekend came around and I was like yeah Saturday and Sunday well I still had more stuff to do I had to do laundry you know, I had to do, because my mom was camping and, you know, just back and forth and doing her thing. She just got a new vehicle and, you know, I, I didn't want her to have to really do much. And all this stuff is the stuff that I had to do anyways. It ain't like I, I rely on her to do my laundry. Maybe sometimes to throw my clothes in a dryer, but that's about it, you know. And it's not her responsibility to do my laundry. So I was like, I had to do laundry. Then I, the yard was still growing and, and, you know, all this rain made the yard grow. So I had to do yard work and then... I had to do some other things and it was like, you know, you're done with one chore and one thing that you had to get done and then you had to do another one and it seems like things were just never ending. But I was, I knew that it had to be done and I didn't look at it like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that, man. I'm going to have no fun. And then I knew that this week coming up, this Monday through Saturday, I was going to be on the excavator and I knew there was a lot of work for me to do on my property. So I was just like, I knew, I planned ahead at the excavator thing. And I knew that this week I was not going to be able to do much. Granted, I didn't think the excavator was going to break, but I think that was the Lord telling me, you know, take take a break. You're 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 doing too much. Uh, um, when it broke, friends, I was on like the side of a hill, and one of the tracks didn't move. Like it would move uh, with the other track, but it wouldn't move by itself. So I was like going in a kind of a slight circle, but I. I just thank God. I really did numerous amounts of times. Then I, and I was in the shower and I was thinking, you know, I could have been, I could have been trapped on that hill. I could have tipped over. I could have done numerous things could have happened, but the Lord kept me safe and a lot got done. I got a lot done. I'm not going to lie. I'm very excited about what I did get done and the property is looking great. Granted, three more days of that bad boy, I could have got some stuff done and my four wheeler trails would have been done, man. But you know, the Lord, I feel like the Lord is telling me, you know, to chillax, take a break, just take a breather, maybe just enjoy yourself a little bit now and just get some other things done that you probably wanted to get done that you maybe was going to push by the wayside and stuff like that. So, um, one thing I really want to talk about friends and being rooted into the Lord. It, 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 it dawned on me when I was out there doing them stumps and digging them stumps out, how deep them roots are. And immediately I thought to myself and I was like, man, I, 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 when I'm out in nature, I always like to think about the Lord and think about what he's trying to tell me. Granted, I had my earbuds in this whole, the whole time and some songs wasn't really related to the Lord because I played my playlist. And like I told you guys before in my previous messages that some of them songs just aren't very Christian-y, but you know, I was jamming and you know, not taking things literally and not wanting to do the things that the songs were talking about. That's for sure. But if I had not been rooted into the Lord and not um, concentrating on what he was trying to tell me through situations that I was going through and how things were getting done and times where I almost 
hurt myself or almost tipped over or almost did things man he kept me safe throughout all of this and um I could have been easily just sidetracked and wouldn't have got this done and wouldn't have been blessed with the opportunity to do the things that I'd done or the knowledge or the the tools. I mean, just everything has came together. So let's get to the word. We're coming out of the book of Colossians, um, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. It's about being rooted. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Um, so it says, and now, just as you are, accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. So just because you accepted him doesn't mean you're done. Friends, we got to take a next step. We got to dig deeper. We got to surround ourselves with word. We got to dig into his, his word. His word is what keeps us rooted and strong. And that's how he speaks to us and speaks through us is his, his word. So, friends, we need to continue to seek Him and His face. And um, there's some people in our lives that just aren't very valuable to our seekage, so to speak. Um, some people seek advice from the wrong friends um, and can ultimately steer you into a different direction. Say, you know, you were headed in the right direction and you decided to get some advice from a friend that doesn't base their opinions on biblical um, theories and they just want to give you their honest opinion about what they think and friends that's where we go wrong we we need to really seek guidance and help from the friends that um, are rooted rooted into the word and rooted into doing the right things and making the right decisions and you know giving the godly advice um, um, verse 7 says let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him let your faith then your I'm sorry then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you were overflow with thankfulness going back to being uh, thankful I just kept thanking him man because I was blessed with all these opportunities to be you know the two weeks helped me out you know granted I don't get paid for those two weeks, but that truck is kind of sick. I don't normally like those rims, but it looks kind of nice. Um, but friends, we need to be rooted into the Lord, into the Word, because storms come. Friends, I was out there um, working on that stump that I was telling you guys. I posted my little story. If you didn't see my story, I posted um, something about the stumps that were out there. Two down, six to go. Well two uh well actually four four of the stumps were grown together and this is kind of an analogy that i just want to use that when we are it took me like two and a half hours to dig one portion of two stumps out and there was no way that me or my friend was going to be able to move these things after i dug them out so i had to dig a hole and bury them because they were they were freaking monstrosity they were huge um, i didn't get a picture but who cares they're buried so what that meant is like when we are firmly rooted with the Father, we're strong. The enemy is going to have to work at us pretty hard to get us out of our element, to get us away from him. And 99% of the time, the Lord is going to fight our battles for us. So he's going to take all the blows if we just continue to trust in him, saying, Father, I trust you, whatever this storm, this life storm, this maybe you lost a job, maybe you went through a breakup, maybe, you know, you got into an argument, you know, all these little things are life storms that come at us. Maybe, you know, you broke up with somebody or, you know, or maybe you found out some bad news or maybe there was infidelity in a relationship or maybe there was lying or, you know, maybe your dog died, <laughs> you know. Maybe you had a death in the family or, you know, all these life storms come at us that if we're not firmly rooted into the Lord, then we're going to easily be blown all, all over the place and be ripped out away from him. And we can't let that happen, friends. We have to firmly be grounded and rooted in his word. His word is what's going to last. His word is what's going to keep us ground. There are so many things in this book that are relevant with the things that we go through in life. It's so crazy. And if we just open our minds and open our ears and open our eyes to look at the book and read them, 
or just download the YouVersion Bible app and have it read it to you, friends, so we can get some literacy of the Word of God in our lives, so we can continue to let our faith grow, because just like that root, it took me a long, long time to keep busting at that thing, to keep working at that thing, and I'm not going to lie, I almost gave up. And if we just keep telling, you know, telling the enemy, no, you're not going to win. No, you're not going to, this storm is not going to take me down. This storm is only going to build me stronger, you know. When I used to grow, I used to actually snap the branches on my uh, plants. And what that did is it made it grow stronger. It made it yield more. Um, so friends, we might snap. <laughs> But don't let it take us out, you know. And just because we're planted next to it doesn't mean that, how do I say this, that our roots are grown deep enough to sustain the uh, the storm. Um, we have to keep, keep with the Father. We have to keep into the Word. We have to keep, you know, growing. We can't just be planted and be like, oh, we're good. Oh, I just got saved. Yeah, I'm good to go for the rest of my life. You know, the storms are going to take you out. The enemy wants nothing more than to keep you in your dysfunction, you know, to keep you thinking that you're not going to make it, that this, jo this job that you're trying to do isn't going to last or, you know, he's going to fill you with all of these thoughts that if you're not planted into the word of the Lord, if you don't trust in your father who has got you through all these other situations that you prayed before and you didn't think that you were going to make it and then you're not going to be able to make it. You're not, friends. We need to trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not on our own understandings and just continue to push forward. Trusting in the Lord. Man, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good stuff. Um, just a little side note. The same faith that we exercised when we surrendered our lives to God is to be used daily as we continue growing spiritually. It is not enough to be planted. We must be rooted deeply in Christ. We must find our strength in Him so that we will grow and mature in our faith. Friends, it's black and white. That's the Word. The Word. I'm super excited. I really wanted to get more done, but I I got a lot accomplished. Um, I hope he gets to fix his uh, excavator, though. I really don't know what's wrong with it. I don't like borrowing things and stuff breaking, but I did. As soon as it broke, I told him, I was like, hey, something's not working properly. I am an avid person when it comes to, like, stumping not working right to stop and let somebody know. Um, because it's common sense that if something isn't working right, we want to stop. If something isn't going right in our lives, we need to stop, evaluate it. And if it cannot be fixed, uh, we need to go to the source that can fix it or to somebody that knows how to fix it. And if it's our lives that we don't know and it's unmanageable, we need to go to the Father um, first and foremost at all times. And then consult a very close friend that will uplift you and bring you into high spirits that will give you encouraging words from the Lord. Like me. <laughs> now, I used to have some friends that just didn't really give good advice. Um... And some friends that are really just not taking my advice. And <clears throat> they're struggling. They're struggling very, very hard in their life. Um, granted, they don't see it because they're stuck in their dysfunction. They think life is good. But they're not fulfilling God's purpose at all. Because um, the relationship that they think that is the one for them is actually dragging them further back. Um, it's not my, um, not my job to judge. Um, but as a discernment, as a spiritual person, I have to acknowledge the fact that the way they're living their life just is, isn't right. And some of us out there aren't living our lives right. We're not at all. And you know who you are. You know what you're doing wrong. And you are basically convincing yourself that the wrongdoing that you're doing is okay. And that's the enemy. The enemy's trying to tell you, like, hey, man, no, nah, it's good. Just keep, continue to do that. You're fine. Look, look at you doing all right. Don't worry about it. But the Lord's telling you, no, this is wrong. You could be doing so much more. You could be doing so much better. You could be so much further along. 
please. Trust in him. With all of your heart. Get rooted. Get grounded in him. And the enemy, the storms that come through, as long as you were rooted with the Father, you both are going to be so strong. You're going to be intertwined. And your roots are just going to expand. And your Father's going to fight for you. And there's many things that you can trust. And you can be like, Lord, I know this sucks very badly, but I know you will bring me through and we will get through this and we will learn something through this or we won't. We'll just continue to reach out to Facebook like, oh man, oh, please pray for me. I, I'm having problems. Oh, oh, I just went to the bar last night and got stupid drunk and now I feel crappy and I'm going to do it again tomorrow, but please pray for me. Um, we reach out to the wrong people, friends. We do. I used to. I still do. It's kind of hard for me to... It's really hard for me to post pictures and stuff like that. Because I... I don't know. I'm going to just leave that subject alone. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm bragging ever. But the Lord has gifted me with a bunch of gifts. Granted, like I said before, a lot of my gifts have been self-taught. But the Lord put those things in my body. He gave us all gifts all of us you have a gift i tell you guys this many many times man got some stuff out of them uh, sorry <laughs> but we all have gifts we all can be trained in, and it takes a good uh, knowledgeable person that would want to train you and that can train you that has the patience to train you and it's just like jesus it's just like god he has the patience. He wants to train you. He wants to help you. He wants to build you up. But some of us just don't ever ask. Some of us won't ask. We will never, ever, ever, ever ask. And you're going to miss your opportunities because you're not asking the Lord. For one, to forgive you of your sins and ask for, ask for forgiveness. And for two, just acknowledge Him as Christ and Lord and let Him into your heart for eternal salvation telling you it's the best decision you'll ever make in your life friends i'm excited i'm kind of whooped um but at the same time i kind of feel good so i don't know if that makes any sense at all but friends um i'm still hanging in there i'm still doing uh well um yeah i'm getting things done i'm staying busy but I'm not staying away from the Lord. Back on my last message, I, I reminded you guys that I have three apps now that uh, I didn't explain to you that I got totally sidetracked and I didn't continue to tell you guys why I got them three. Some people don't even spend like five minutes with the Lord, right? So it's like these three apps, the time that I read and then it reads to me some prayers like the pray app reads to me like nightly prayers morning prayers just a prayer um and then the, the holy bible which is the king james version it's got a prayer um and then an inspiration it's got a verse an inspiration and then prayer sometimes i post some of those on my story some of them are really good the king james version really speaks to me though because i'm going through things in my life uh and it just totally it man it's it's redonkulous on how it pertains to the situation that i'm going through and it's like the lord is talking to me there's times that i ask i'm like god why don't you talk to me i wish i could talk to you i wish i can just hear your voice audible and a king james version verse will come through and then the inspiration and then the prayer and it's like him saying okay here i am it's so amazing but some of us, uh, okay, I'm not going to forget about what I want to talk about in a minute. But all of it together, even the YouVersion Bible app, um, all of it together gives about five minutes of you with the Lord, you know. Um, and it's so cool because it, some, like during work when I'm listening to my music in my earbuds, I'll hear that little notification. And then that notification lets me know, like, hey, it's time to pray. Hey, let's reach out to the Lord. Let's let him know that you're thinking about him and that you're acknowledging him. And that he's there with you, you know. And it's so cool because sometimes I'll be going through some frustrating things and I'll hear that little doo 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 or whatever the noise sound effect would be. And it just lets me know that he's there, friends. And some of these 
some of us need to surround ourselves with stuff like that. Some of us need to dig into uh, um, sermons. I listened to Darius Daniels again, uh, Mike Todd, which actually it was Charles Metcalf because Mike Todd's on sabbatical. He's just had his baby. Praise the Lord, he's number four. So, uh, but Charles Metcalf has really been uh, preaching really good stuff. Um, I follow Transformation Church every week. I love them. If I live closer, that would be my home church. Uh, is the Lord telling me to sell my property and move to Tulsa? Maybe. <laughs> uh, I haven't really asked him, so I guess we don't know. Um, but no, um, some of these things, we surround ourselves with YouTube. We surround ourselves with Facebook. We surround ourselves with all this other stuff. And then we wonder why we're so depressed. And we wonder why we can't get through life. And we wonder why we're uh, listening to the enemy more and more and more and not to the Lord. Because we don't ever surround ourselves with things that are of the Lord. Your friends, the things we watch, the things we hear, listen to. I mean, the list goes on. Um, the worldly things will creep in and get inside of your head. That's how the enemy gets to you is through our heads. But friends, I've been listening to these sermons, and man, it's just like the Lord is speaking to me. And friends, some of us need to do that. You say, Clinton, no, I'm not a, I don't listen to sermons like that, you know. Neither did I. I didn't. Until I started watching Stephen Furtick, you know, I'd never really watched a sermon, but he made it interesting. And pick a person that you like, you know. There's, if you don't know, ask me. Ask. Reach out. You got to ask. Ask and you shall receive. We're, we're closed mouth all the time until something bad happens in our lives. Then we want to tell everybody, usually social media. It's like, come on. Ask. Ask somebody for help. Ask somebody for a word. Ask somebody for encouragement. Ask somebody what you should do, but make sure they're godly people. Somebody is not looking out for themselves. and Make sure they love the Lord. If they love the Lord, they love you. Because as we are, God is love. And I am sweating, so I'm going to get in here, get these gains, or at least attempt to. Um, friends, be rooted and be grounded in, with the Lord, and you will be able to sustain any storm that comes your way. And I declare this in Jesus' name. There will be nothing that can take you away. Stay faithful. Stay in His Word. Download that version Bible app. If you don't like to read, it reads it to you. Select the version that you like. That NLT, that message version, that NIV, they got all types of ty different types. And they give you inspirations, they give you studies, they give you all these types of things. And if you want somebody to do it with, reach out. We can do it together. Um, I am all about Bible study. So anytime anybody wants to do a little Bible study, I'm sure you guys out there that know the Bible, front and back, could help me out. And you know, I could help you. So let's help each other. Let's grow grow and be rooted together so um, i love you guys stay up stay safe stay cool and thank god daily for what you have in life love god love others love yourselves peace